This is going to be a quick video on using blend groups or blend the blend tool um, in order to make duplicates of things. Uh, it'll be followed up by a much better video later, but I was working with it today and uh, I thought I should at least show this off so that you can see what's possible. So if I were to take a line, for instance, or I'll just go ahead and draw something. All right, so I've got a box. If I wanted to make multiple copies of that box, uh, spaced apart from each other, right? I could drag and I'm right clicking to make a copy and then I'm le letting go of the left click that makes a copy. So now I've got two of the same exact box, right? If I wanted multiple iterations of that, I could take this box and then come down here to blend and what I do is um, you click and drag, so I'm clicking and dragging to what I want to blend to and as I as I move my cursor to the edge here so that it can detect it, um, I'll let go once it snaps. Okay, so I just click and drag, and as I move it, it kind of snaps to the middle of that object, so I know that it's blending to that object. So now we've got 20 um, blend objects. You can change this. Let's say I only wanted four. So now I've got four objects. The cool thing about blend groups is that if I edit this first one here, Okay, let's say I make an edit. It's going to edit all the way along until it gets to that next one. If I wanted to edit this one as well, I could do that, and it would just blend from one to the other. I don't, you don't do this a lot in memorials, um, but if I wanted this one to be blue and this one to be red, then it would actually blend between those two colors, which normally, like I said, I wouldn't really do that. But this gives you the ability to do um, a whole bunch of things all at once. So for instance, today I was making a window, and let's just say I had a box here, and then I wanted to do the inside panels of the window. I could do one like that, and I could drag and drop this one down here, and then I will blend from this to the next. So I've got those pieces. I decide how many panels I want, right? So this came in handy that I could take, actually I've got to convert this to curves, so I used Control Q to do that. I could take this one and move it in a little bit, and take this one and move it in a little bit, and it moves all the rest of them, which is nice. One really neat feature of uh, using blends is that you can actually fit them to a path. So let's say I had a circle like this, and I made another circle, and then I did a blend between this one and that one. Okay, and then I drew a path. So let's say, so let's just say I drew a heart. That's really horrible. Let me smooth that out a little bit. That was a really, really bad heart. Sorry. I think recording a video is messing with my processing power. Anyway, okay, so I've got this path. So I could right click on the edge of my um, circle since it doesn't have a fill. <coughs> and I'm using right click instead of left click. So I'm right click dragging. As I drag it over, you can see a, uh, the cursor is going to change. Okay, so as it changes to this crosshair here, I let go and then I say fit blend to path. Now that's going to fit that blend along that path. I can tell it how many iterations I want. Let's say I jump it up to 50. And I can also tell it over here to blend along the full path. And it'll go all the way around. Now for monuments, this is probably you know too many. Uh, so you can just interactively drop this down. And you can see as you do that how that works out. So it's a good way to uh, create um, like rosary beads, that sort of stuff. You can also click on the path itself and right click on the X so that you can't even see the path. Um, you can edit the path while it's the way that it is. So if you wanted to change the way that things worked, something like this so that pieces aren't running into each other. 
You can also do groups. So let's say I had this and I had applied an outline to it. Um, I'm going to get a little bit smaller here. This isn't very good life size. So let's just uh, let's make a die. Okay. <coughs> so if I wanted to draw up here. rosary beads uh, something similar to that Oops, sorry okay so then I can take my circle so here we got quarter inch here and we'll apply an outline to that all right, and then I'm going to select that whole thing and group it, make a copy of that, and then I'll blend between this group and that group. I've got a whole bunch of those, and then I'll drag those down here, fit those to the path, and you can see how they go around. Um, so the way that paths work, there's a beginning, there's the middle, and then there's the end. Anything you change on the end is going to change um, how that works. Anything you change on the beginning is going to change, you know, that side. And there's different options when you're selecting the whole thing up here for how they blend clockwise, counterclockwise, that sort of stuff. Um, if you do colors, <coughs> excuse me, if you go along the path. The other thing here, rotate all objects. That's important. Um, let's see if I could just do a really quick example of this. Let's say, and this probably isn't going to look the best, but if I drew something like this, okay, I'll turn all those to cusps. Sorry, I took the long way. Okay, so I just made a simple thing, and I'm going to take this one, and yeah, it's not going to look too bad. Okay, so if I took this and outlined it, and then I made a copy of that, I'm going to group these together, Control G to group, drag from one to the other, okay? So now, if I wanted let's say for instance to take this die and I'm going to contour it down a little bit so let's contour it in maybe two inches okay break that contour apart and now I've just got a line to work with I'm going to get rid of the fill so that I um, get rid of the fill so I can't see it really just keep my line and then I've got this that I can drag and drop on top of this line, say fit, be fit uh, blend to path. So here's my thing, my, my blend. I want to blend that along the full path. I'm gonna need a lot more than this, so let's say, I don't know, 200. That's too many maybe. Okay, so here's where, um, this comes into play is that I can take my beginning and my end and I can see those because they'll show these little dots here so if I had the whole thing selected like well where's the beginning and the end so you can see it's got these pieces there so here's my beginning and if I rotate that okay and then if I rotate this, oops, rotate, and if I check rotate all objects, all right, here we go. I go from there, I didn't mean to rotate that one all the way around. Okay. So what it's doing is it's rotating that object as it goes around. 
So I can take these edges that are squares, and because they're squares, they're not working out very well. So I'll just add a node here, add a node here, <coughs> delete that node, and maybe uh, change that to a curve so that I can curve it instead. And it'll be a little bit more clean. It's not perfect, but it sure is going to save a lot of work. Oops, let me do that. Add a node, delete that node, curve this a little bit. So there's definitely things you can play with. <coughs> um, the thing to remember, so if I go to wireframe, you know, we can see that the original line is still there. I can hide that line if I want to, so you can't really see it. Um, and I'll, I'll go ahead and just keep working on this. Add a node. Curve that a little bit. So what I was saying before is if I click um, on my <laughs> blend group, <coughs> in order to actually edit this now um, to make up for these pieces and get those things fixed, what I would need to do is um, break this group apart. So you go up to Object and you bl break the blend group apart. What that does is it separates the first node and the second node and then all the rest of the, not node, I should say Object. So you got your first object and your second ob your ending object, and then all the middle objects end up getting grouped. So that group, you have to uh, ungroup all those first, and then you can start messing with things. So all these individual pieces, you can start uh, doing things with. <coughs> anyway, so this is getting a little bit further into a, a, a different video that I'll have to end up doing on how to make that look pretty. But just to show you what you can do with blend groups, I mean, you can do rosaries, you can do ropes, you can do all sorts of fun stuff. Um, or you can just make duplicates of, you know, a piece that you've got. So play around with it. Blend groups are pretty awesome. <coughs>